inspired by other videos on YouTube, I thought I'd have a go at making one of these weird guitars people had been building. This ended up taking a lot longer than I expected, but the result was definitely worth it. At first, I thought I could make a pixel art guitar from these pre-coloured craft sticks, but as I split one open, I realised they were only coloured on the outside. They were also slightly too short for what I needed, and not perfectly square. I decided to base my design off Super Mario World. Since I would have to dye all the colours myself, I figured I might as well go all out. The best material I could think of was the lollipop stick. 10,000 of them to be exact. From each stick, I would be able to yield 4 pixels. Around 8,000 lollipop sticks for the body alone were measured with calipers to check the thickness was 2mm, with a tolerance of plus or minus 0.1 of a millimeter. Particularly unattractive sticks were also discarded. The rounded tops and tails of each stick were first to be removed. I was able to grab a handful and feed them through the bandsaw. After being squared with the hand plane, it was back to the bandsaw, where the lollipop sticks would be sliced down the middle. This next stage ended up being the most time consuming. Eight at a time, the half sticks were placed in a shooting board and planed until perfectly square. If each pixel was slightly off, it would have a dramatic effect on the size of the instrument. Finally, the sticks could be cut in half, ready for colour. The white pixels were made from perspex. I was unable to dye the lollipop sticks perfectly white all the way through, so I made a compromise. These were made in the same way as their wooden counterparts. Making all 29,000 pixels took around 3 months from start to finish. I first thought I would be able to dip each pixel in dye, and have the colour saturate the whole stick. Unfortunately, this did not work. After many failed attempts, I considered that the grain of the wood acts like a straw, and with some suction, the dye could be forced through the wood. Not wanting to suck the colour through 29,000 individual pixels myself, I employed the use of a vacuum chamber. Within 2 minutes in the pot, I was able to get complete saturation. Instead of the pixels, you're watching me dye the sticks for the neck instead. The pixels for the body were dyed the same exact way. Here's some photos of them once they were complete. I knew that gluing the 29,000 pixels in one go would be almost impossible to do without an error, so I decided to divide the guitar into a grid and do 100 pixels at a time. Four of these little jigs were made to help speed things up. Referencing the drawing, coloured pixels were laid out on the bench and were lifted 10 at a time into the jig with copious amounts of glue. They were then clamped and left for at least 20 minutes before the blocks were removed and the rough ends were chopped. The blocks were then sanded on a levelling beam to ensure a good join with its surrounding blocks. Once four blocks were complete, they could be glued together in a larger jig. With the immense clamping pressure required, three of my clamps didn't survive this step. I repeated this process until all the blocks were made. Some sacrificial blocks were also made to help support around the edge of the guitar. Each block of 400 was then checked for width, and I found the smallest block was 38.7mm wide. This means that all the other blocks had to be taken down to this exact size, or else the pixels wouldn't line up and there would be obvious gaps between the blocks. 
I spent some time sanding on the leveling beam and checked for parallels with the dial indicator. I made a jig with wedges instead of clamps to glue a large batch of pixels together. Each block was given a number to keep track of the order. This was probably the most stressful glue up of my life. The next day, the wedges were removed, and the operation was a success. The remaining blocks were glued by hand. A sacrificial block was attached to the body to help alignment, and with a dab of superglue surrounded by tight bond, each block was pressed into place. Unfortunately, the footage of sanding the body flat was lost, but I can tell you it took around 3 days to complete and almost 30 extremely coarse sanding discs. Believe it or not, this is the neck. We had a preview of dyeing these sticks earlier, so now the colours can be jumbled up. The sticks were sorted into lots of 360 and were laid out on the bench. They were then pushed into a mould with glue smeared all over. Making one was so much fun that I decided to make two more. All three were planed flat and glued together. The fingerboard was also made the same exact way, but with black sticks. After the glue was set, the neck blank was flattened. The headstock angle was cut, planed, and the scarf joint glued. As this dried, I made the headplate. In essence, this was done the same as the body, just at a much smaller scale. Once the neck was dry, the waste material was removed, and the headstock could be fit and glued. The truss rod and carbon fibre slots were then routed. Before the reinforcement can be installed, we need to finish the fingerboard. It was cleaned up with a hand plane. The frets were then slotted in a shop made jig with a Japanese handsaw with tape to mark the depth of each slot.
And finally, either side of the fingerboard was tapered. The truss rod slot was filled with silicon, and the carbon fibre was glued with epoxy. The fingerboard could then be glued with tight bond. The headstock was cut out of a coping saw and was then taken down to size on the bobbin sander. Now we can return to the magically sanded body. The neck pocket was removed with a Forstner bit to make less work for the router, which was then used to clean away the rest of the material. At this point, the neck was carved. I had to rely on rasps and sandpaper for this neck, as the guitar essentially has interlocking grain, meaning that some of the lollipop sticks tear out if I use a blade. Now, the fingerboard can be flattened and radiused. The bridge was then triangulated, and the string through ferrules were drilled out. I made these tiny, quarter-sized pixels from sticks I messed up earlier. They were dyed and glued into blocks 100, just like the headstock and body. After all the blocks were complete, they were glued to make this Bowser inlay for the 12th fret. There were some excess pixels to aid gluing, which were removed before Bowser's outline could be traced to the fingerboard with a scalpel. The cavity could then be cleared, and Bowser was inlaid with glue and fingerboard sawdust. In the drill press, all 24 frets were pressed into place. I turned one of the clamps I ruined earlier into a fret clamp. This enabled me to clamp each fret tightly to the fingerboard while I wicked glue down each side. This fingerboard is much softer than a normal guitar, so it was important the frets were firmly seated. The fretwork was then completed. The sharp ends were filed away and beveled. The tips of each fret were marked with a sharpie, and with a leveling beam and sandpaper, the frets were sanded until no sharpie remained. The marker was then reapplied, and each fret was radiused with a three-cornered file. The file marks were then sanded out up to 1,500 grit, and metal polish was used to buff each fret to a shiny finish. Some final custom pieces could then be made. I turned a block of 100 pixels on the lathe to make this volume knob. I also turned these ferrules for the bolt-on neck. The holes for the bolts and ferrules were drilled out on the body, as was the hole for the output jack. One pixel seemed to object to this. Holes were then drilled out on the neck, and the threaded inserts were installed. The control plate was then fitted to the body with magnets. Both the neck and body were sanded to 320 grit. The neck was finished with a couple coats of true oil, 
while the body was simply finished with wax. I would have liked to put a finish on the body, but every finish I tried discoloured the end grain. With finishing finished, all the hardware can be installed. Note that I was extra careful when installing the bridge. I've heard of some really bad builders who slip and dent their freshly French polished finishes with a screwdriver. The nut was then made. The ends were marked, as was the top of the nut. It was then taken down to size on the disc sander, and the strings were marked out with a string spacing ruler. Each slot was then filed with the smallest file I have, and then widened to the correct size after I was happy the slots were straight. The strings were left slightly high as the instrument breaks in over the next few weeks. I shaped the nut to be more comfortable after the instrument settled. The intonation and string height at the 12th fret were set, and that's pretty much everything wrapped up. I'll upload a demo for this guitar in a separate video, so if you're interested, be sure to check it out.